Thank you to Ferreo for partnering with me on a portion of this video. We are calling it iPhone. We've added some other things beyond just music. Apple has had some just banger years for products where they knock things out of the park. And we're just the very tippy beginning of 2023. And Apple, I think, wants you to believe it's going to be one of those years. Already, we've seen new HomePods, new MacBook Pros, and it appears the list is just getting started, but not so fast. I think what we're gonna see in 2023 is gonna be more of a meh S year than one that's gonna blow you away. But let's talk about it. All right, so let's start with, I'm gonna call him the grandfather of Apple rumors in spite of him being on the young side. Mark Gurman from Bloomberg recently shared that Apple is no longer focusing on its usual slew of products. There will be updates, which I'll get to in a bit. Instead, Apple is deeming 2023 to be the year of mixed reality headsets. And after many delays and supposedly seven years of development, it seems Apple is finally ready to show off their first brand new product line in years. So what we know, or at least we think we know, is that this will be the headset that you wear over your face has the ability to do uh, AR and VR. So it's gonna project images onto the real world. This is very sci-fi idea. A lot of companies have tried, some have succeeded at, some have failed at, but Apple as usual thinks that they have the answer. Inside, supposedly powered by an M-series chip and has a dozen cameras on the outside to map the world around it. And finally, it should be running a new operating system called XROS, which is a horrible name. I'm assuming that's like a placeholder in Reality OS is what they're gonna call it. It's kind of all we know about the headset right now. I'm excited for something new like this. I don't yet see a use case for mass adoption of AR and VR. Allegedly, it have a battery pack that you clip on to your belt. It should run around $3,000, so it's not gonna be a huge mass product. But what's the use case for something like this? Uh, I'm envisioning being able to project your iPhone into your hand or project a computer onto a desk. You don't have to go out and buy a MacBook Pro or an iMac, maybe a virtualized operating system that goes along with that. I don't know what the killer use case is going to be. Everybody runs to gaming, but Apple and gaming have not had the best relationship over the years, so I, I don't know. I also don't know when we're going to see this thing. Uh, the current rumor is that it'll be announced to the public early this year and possibly even at a spring event. And it'll be detailed to developers later at WWDC, followed by a release later on in 2023. But as with like all previous Apple rumors to this headset, I mean, everything's changing. We don't know. They could kill it for all we know at this point. If you know one category that Apple's not gonna enter in the near future, uh, it's beauty and skincare. Uh, I talked with my wife about sort of skincare techniques. I'm, I'm on camera. I wanna try to look as good as possible. Yet working against that constantly is having three kids and finding sleep has been tough. I think my phone was listening to me, so I got ads for something called Foreo, and they have a product called the Foreo Bear. It's a Swedish company, and it does microcurrents. And what it does, according to the website, it'll increase collagen, it'll increase skin elasticity, uh, it'll help reduce some of those fine lines you get from, you know, smiling so much throughout your life. So, I did what any good husband would do, got one for my wife, uh, to give it a shot. It's a, it's a great gift. I think she's a smoke show, so I don't appears to be working there. If I'm gonna give it a shot for myself as well, again, being on camera, I wanna try to look as youthful and as vibrant as possible, and hopefully that, coupled with my kids sleeping, uh, could make for a much healthier looking John. And it's pretty easy to use, honestly, the two little things on top, that's why it's called the bear, it looks like little bear ears. You kind of rub them on the sides of your face, it comes with the serum that'll kind of give your skin some new life, and hopefully make everything look a lot younger. And it's really simple, it's easy, it doesn't hurt. So I feel like this, there's no harm in trying it. Uh, there's no harm in trying to make yourself look better, look, feel better. If you have a career like mine where you want camera, something that is obviously very important. It makes an awesome gift, easy to use, you can use it in an absolute few minutes, uh, and it is not very expensive at all. If you want to check it out or pick it up for yourself, we'll put a link to it down below.
So clearly the headset is going to steal the show this year. That still leaves us with the other portable devices Apple sells, but there seems to be a cohesive story between most of them. And that's don't expect any major updates with the iPad, the Apple Watch, AirPods, and Apple TV. The most exciting update would probably be the iPhone 15. The current iPhone 14 to 14 Plus do appear to be a sales flop. They're not apparently selling very well. Apple's planning to change that with the 15 series. Current rumors are the non-Pro 15. We got a lot of features from the current 14 Pro. So the high-res 48 megapixel camera, dynamic island, possibly a new design, of course, a new processor. This would make the entry-level phone, I think, really enticing since it's largely been mostly the same for a few generations. On the Pro side, expecting a pretty new design with also new materials like titanium. And most excitingly, the Pro Max will be rebranded to the U. It's the Ultra. What it has in store for this Ultra is still largely a mystery, but I expect better battery, finally, uh, 10 times zoom camera, probably periscope, something that we've had never had on an iPhone before. So the iPhone seems to be getting a pretty decent upgrade. Man, the poor iPad Pro won't be getting an update at all in 2023. Instead, major refresh at the beginning of 2024. If you're holding out for something big, you have to wait a little bit longer. But if all you want is an iPad Pro, it's a good time to go out and get one if they were just updated. And for the market for, say, any other iPads, at most you can get a spec bump, but even that uh, is questionable. Similarly, Apple Watch won't be getting anything notably new, possibly a spec bump. Uh, and AirPods and Apple TV aren't expected to get any updates at all in 2023. So aside from the iPhone, it needs to be a very mellow year uh, for Apple's portables, again, because they want to focus on the headset. One of the other big changes I expect to see this year is in the Mac lineup. We really gotta see what Apple has in store for the MacBook Pro, the Mac Mini, those are just minor spec bumps as expected. Uh, great to see, but no change to design on both of those products. For the rest of the M1 lineup, I'd expect to see that get updated as well. So right now, at least as of this filming, we still have an iMac and Mac Studio on M1 chips. So it wouldn't be a surprise to see those get a bump. Apparently the iMac won't be updated until the M3 is ready though, which could be later this year, but obviously time will tell. There's also word that Apple's gonna introduce a 15 inch version of the MacBook Air, which personally, I will drop my MacBook Pro for. It's been rumored for a while. But the biggest question, I think, in Apple's whole Mac lineup, is that now forgotten Mac Pro. This is still the only Mac that's been updated from Intel, but it seems 2023 will finally be the year that Apple makes that switch. But interestingly, the latest rumor is suggesting that the Mac Pro won't be getting a full redesign like expected. Instead, it won't really change at all. The only difference will be the silicon inside. Now granted the Mac Pro I think still has a really great design, but it's not exactly like a sleek form factor I think a lot of people were expecting. Even more disappointing, it seems modularity won't be sticking around either. So just like other Apple Silicon devices, what you buy regarding CPU and RAM is what you're going to be stuck with, which I think is kind of confusing and disappointing. And to add on to that, it seems the M2 Extreme ultra high-end CPU option has been canceled. And instead, you'll only be able to max it out with an M2 Ultra. So, why would anybody need a Mac Pro, especially if you can get the Mac Studio that already exists? I don't know, your guess is as good as mine. But maybe, on a brighter side, we could see an updated Pro Display XDR with 7K resolution and 120 Hertz Pro Motion. So, while not a huge banger year for Apple, I think aside from uh, the headset, which should be pretty cool, it's gonna be more of a slow year for the company. And perhaps it's building something big building 2024, we get full redesigns and all these new things start to hit. I was hoping for a gigantic version of the iPad Pro, but I will settle for a 15 inch MacBook Air with an M3 processor and be a pretty happy dude. Out of all of these though, uh, I think obviously the mixed reality headset is going to be the flagship for Apple and their focus on all the R&D for the whole year. Everything else is going to take a uh, very secondary seat uh, to that. So I don't know, we'll see what happens, but it should be interesting year at the very least for Apple.